This is One on One. She really uh, needs no introduction. She is Wendy Williams. Uh, she's the host of The Wendy Williams Show. She has been renewed to uh, 2014. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. It's nice to see you again. How are you doing? I'm do how you doing? I'm doing well. We're in our fourth season, and, you know, things are, things are, are going well. I'm so proud of you. We're all proud Thank of you. Thank you. Thanks. Did you think, and by the way, we had you a few years ago at our one-on-one uh, -on -one studio in New Jersey. It's great yep. to have you at our Tish WNET studios it's here. It's fab. Yeah, it is, isn't it, right? Uh-huh. Not too far away from where you do your gig? Yeah, well, we used to be a little bit closer to you. We, we were on 53rd in Hell's Kitchen. But uh, we are HD this season. We weren't at HD before. So instead of uh, doing the um, technical things that would be needed to make our old studio HD, uh, the powers that be believed in us enough that we moved to Chelsea. We have a bigger wow. studio, a bigger space. Um, we share the building with Rachel Ray, which is always very nice. Um, and our, my studio audience holds more people and there's more, just more of everything. Now, it's so interesting. We're going to go with a clip in just a minute. One of the, the segments you do that everyone loves, uh, I need to say my wife loves you. And, then, <laughs> my, and it's so interesting. My son, who was uh, uh, 20 and, and uh, a student at Fordham, and I think of all the people in between that like you, your, your, demogra your demo is a fascinating demo. It is. It crosses age, gender, race, what else? Everything, no? Yeah. Um, it, it's everybody. And Why? It's, um, it's, all, it's the way I've always been. Even growing up in Ocean Township, you know I'm Jersey born and bred. You are a Jersey um, girl. I grew up in Ocean Township, New Jersey, which is a central Jersey. Um, a suburb of New York, uh, closer to New York than Philly. And, you know, my mom and dad um, both raised college this, uh, both college academics. Both college academics, double masters. Uh, they're still married uh, for 55 years. They're retired and they live in Miami. And I have an older sibling and a younger brother. But I grew up, fortunately, in a very stable, solid middle class uh, household. Um, and I was only one of four blacks to graduate from my Ocean Township High School in 1982. And... I've always been black and proud, but I've always attracted everybody. It's not by design, it's just the way I was raised. And the show and my audience is an absolute reflection of my entire life. And uh, that's what happens when uh, one of the segments that we're about to show, Ask Wendy. Yes. And they do ask you just about anything? Yes. We talk about everything, sex, race, uh, uh, Everything. Yeah, well, I have no idea what they're going to ask you now, but we're going to see it. Okay. The Wendy Williams Show, Ask Wendy. Let's go. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's time for Ask Wendy. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. How can I help? Well, my name is Kim, and there is this girl who lives in my building who I think is trying to hook up with my man. <laughs> Every time I see her and she sees him from across the hall or whatever, She'll do the shoulder touch and the hair flip and the very strong eye gaze. And one time... Okay, she's not trying. She's, she's, she's doing it. Like, she's very effective. Because those are all the things that I tell girls when you want to flirt. You flip. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How much does that woman want to be on TV? You know... <laughs> they want to be part of the show. Well, this is... I call my studio audience my co-hosts. They are a part of the show. They, they feed my uh, spontaneity, and, and they, they are just the mood of the show. We ask them to dress in colors, bring your best smiles, um, be fabulous and fashionable. We, and, and Ask Wendy is really a time where people... Um, they express their vulnerability because, mm -hmm. of course, once you talk about your mother-in-law or your your husband who doesn't want to have sex with you anymore, now you have to go back to your friends, and sometimes and the I, husband I, and the husband, and sometimes I think people forget that they're on TV. But I take Ask Wendy very seriously. You know what concerns me is is my wife uh, uh, celebrating her. I'll just uh, she's celebrating her fortieth and. Together with her girlfriends, they are looking to come to your show. And what I worry about <laughs> is that she will get up and say something. <laughs> Is he the ultimate narcissist? Um, I'm worried she's going to get up during Ask Wendy yes. and say something about me. And then you're going to say something like that. But I say it like I mean it. But guys get hurt. You got to you gotta <laughs> bust a few eggs to make a good omelet. No, you know. You say that a lot. I like that. It, well, but, you know, 
It's true. And Ask Wendy <laughs> has been a common thread in my whole career. I used to do it on radio. As you know, I come from radio. Yep. I was in WBLS. Uh, WBLS. I worked Before at WPLJ. That, right? I worked at W, um, w uh, Hot when it was 103 back That's in the right. 80s, and then 97 when it made hip hop. Um, and to me, radio was my first love. And, and I did Ask Wendy there. And when I got the TV show, um, the people who produced the show uh, for me, Deb Bar Mercury, they said, we want to take the radio show and all the great elements that, that, that make you great on radio, and we want to put that on TV. So we have Ask Wendy. We have Hot Topics. Hot Topics is, I, I would talk about the celebrities and you know, go through the magazines when I had my radio show, and I would also interview various people. So you know, a lot of people upset. Why don't you, can we do hot, hot topics and then we'll talk? Got a wig line we'll talk about. Yes, the Ask Wendy book, by the way, is coming yeah, out. Do, do, uh, does May, the book coming out when? May seventh. It's my sixth book, or yes, my sixth book. I read the first two. Yeah, um, and uh, the, this, the the ones are the follow up. The well, first. Yeah, because well, I read the first two. What was after that? Well, um, the first two were New, New, York, New York Times bestsellers, including my autobiography. Your, the, yeah, I was going to say your autobiography. I and read. then I wrote wrote three novels, had, oh. following a heroine by the name of Ritz Harper, who happens to be a really deliciously devilish radio personality in New York, uh, you know, who goes through a lot before she finally gets her talk show. She's not very nice, but really fun to write about. Okay. And I would love to take that to some place like, you know, an oxygen or something and turn that into something. We have a production company uh, now. Sixth book is uh, called? Ask Wendy. Coming out? At May 7th. And it's uh, comprised of letters from my Wendy watchers and me giving the honest truth. As can I know see, it. Can we sit a little bit of the uh, TV version of Ask Wendy? Yes. Real quick, Ask Wendy on TV. I'm really excited about the new season of American Idol, which starts tonight at eight o'clock on Fox. <laughs> it's two hours tonight, and then uh, two hours tomorrow. And is it, is it terrible to say that I'm not really looking forward to the competition as much as I am what goes on with Mariah Carey and Nicki Minaj? <laughs> is, that, is that you too? Yes. Are you a little embarrassed to admit that too? No. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> now, during Hot Topics, have you ever had one of your celebrity friends yes. reach out for you and say, Wendy, you hurt me? Um, not you, I hurt, I hurt them, but certainly to clear up. And that's the great thing about being live out of New York at 10 a.m. You know, our production schedule is, you know, we're live Monday through Thursday, and then we tape Friday's show on Thursday afternoon. It's great because I have a three-day weekend. But, I, you know, Fantasia Barino is one of those people. Yeah, you know, who you I remember up. that. Aretha Franklin has called up before. What an um, honor. Uh, Lisa, Lisa Vanderpump from Beverly Hills has called before. Yeah, sure, people. Bro, didn't you have a very famous, I checked it out on the radio, that one of the most famous things you had was with Whitney, no? Whitney Houston. That was a big one. Yeah, you know, I never met Whitney in my entire life and never had a conversation with her. That one conversation um, will forever be, I guess, world, cemented worldwide. in history. You yeah. wrote about that, too. I did. I wrote about it. Um, I talked about it. And unfortunately, I never got a chance to meet her. But the thing that we have in common is that we are the same age. We struggle to have a child. Um, we str uh, struggle through addiction, mm. um, both coming from loving households whose parents care about us. And I just thought one day we'd meet and we might be sober and we wouldn't say one word to each other, just kind of hug and nod and, and walk off. You know, so many people look to you. When you made the move to, to television, and you were so successful on radio, I, I thought, wow, why is she doing this first? Yeah. Because she's at the top of her game? In the radio, I and, know. And you didn't, ha you didn't keep a foot in radio, which blew me away. I know. I gotta tell you, it blew me, and not, not just me, a lot of people. And you put all your eggs in that basket. It looked to. like you were. And at first, I was checking this show out, I said, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. I get it. It has improved. Yes. And is off the charts now. Yes. When it first came out, Yes. Were you saying to yourself, um, this is it? Or did you say to yourself, it has to get a lot better? Um, well, we knew I mean, that- just very- Yes, no, we knew that it would have to get a lot better. I mean, you know, you our took, show- you, Did you take it over at that point and start having a real strong hand in it? Well, yes. Well, I'm one of the executive producers. Yep, I see Me, that. Me, David Perler, and my, hus my husband, Kevin, we are the executive producers and we, um, you know, we started off as a six week sneak peek. In other words, if it worked, I'm on my way. If it didn't, well, I'm still in radio. And for the summer of 2008, I was doing the television show for the six week sneak peek. And then I'd get off the TV and I'd go right oh. to my radio show. What I found with radio is that as opposed to people, 
the powers that be, the decision makers being happy for me and, and understanding that, you know, I would love to do both and I, I will give you my all still here at radio. It's, you know, I'm not gonna blow it off. Um, put it this way. Were they rooting for you? No. Because? Good answer, or good question. So when I found out that we had um, a first season at the end of our six week sneak peek. They were giving you another shot. They were. They were giving you a full shot. They are giving me the full shot on TV. And I stayed in radio, but I knew that my plan was when we went on the air um, to start our first season um, that I'd be leaving radio and that I would just have to leave it up to the powers that be. You know, I, I of course believe in a higher power and sometimes you just have to take a risk and I've never been scared in my life to take risks, Steve. And I think that a lot of times people who were scared miss out on a lot. But when you were getting the early, early criticism. Yes. And the critics. Yes. Were coming out of the woodwork. Yes. Was there a part of you that said, I think I made a mistake? No. You have that much confidence in yourself. I have that much confidence in myself, but you also have to have the right team around you. If you don't have the right team around you, failure is imminent. I'm only one woman and I, uh, I am open, open to suggestion. I, I like to think that I'm not so um, big headed on my own talent that I don't take suggestion, whether it would be, um, you know, colors, the proper colors to wear. I mean, because when, you, when you're on TV, particularly as a daytime talk show host, there are so many things that are critical. Uh, the positioning of the audience, the colors yes. of the chair, the, the colors that I wear, uh, which hair looks better on TV in terms of color. You know, if you what see- What do you mean which hair? You... Well, you know I wear wigs. What? But if you, if you saw me <laughs> come into the city today, I'm in a white hot blonde wig because I can't wait for summer. White hot blonde. Not but, the same hair you have on for no, public television? No, 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 no. Is this your public television wig? This is my, this is, uh, my, my TV wig, and I'll tell you what it, this is. Uh, very blonde hair is very fuzzy on TV. Okay. You know, whereas browner, warmer colors mm. are shinier and better. As a daytime talk show host, I can't have fuzzy hair. It's just, you just don't do things like that. You know, you, you wear sensible shoes and, you know, sit like a lady and- Oh, that's you, you and Magic right there? <laughs> that's me and Magic Johnson. I really enjoyed I'm meeting I'm sorry for him. doing it. I just see Magic, I just got thrown off. Yeah, we had the best time. I've met so many wonderful people. Yeah. From Donald Trump to Halle Berry and, and Magic Johnson. I've cooked with people that I admire so much, like Guy Fieri and, you know, look me and Selma Hayek. And, and people come to the, the show and they let loose. It's, it's, it's fun. Yes, it is fun. It is fun. By the way, the wig thing. Um, yes. Because you, I, you know how many times I've seen you on the show, you're like, wait a minute, and you're looking at the camera, because you do the same thing I do. Uh -huh. I, I'm so vain. Yeah. Like, I look out of the corner of my eye, and you'll go, wait a minute. Yeah. I've seen you adjust your wig. Uh, well, yeah, I shift them. What's up with that? Well, because sometimes I will find that, uh, you know, I'll feel it sliding back a little bit, even though they're secured very well, and I will. Okay, I'm just, gonna do mine right just now. Shift and adjust. If my partner. Hold not... on, you just did that. Don't do that. That freaked me <laughs> scary, out. Scary, right? Don't do that. But here's the thing: I wear wigs because I have thyroid disease, but I've turned something that's possibly negative, especially you know, for a woman to be, be having thinning hair, um, into a positive. I've been wearing wigs every day, probably for the past. 13 or 14 years of my life. Um, certainly if I had a smaller personality and a smaller frame, then my thinner hair would be perfect. But I am a very statuesque woman. You know, I'm a hearty, robust girl. Yeah, you're a beautiful and, woman. and I need hair that matches not just my physicality, but my personality. You so, make it work. Yeah, I'm having a wig line come out. Yeah, but tell me about, so the wig line is called? Wendy Williams Hair World. And what I love about it is that, you know, girls these days, black, white, whatever age, everybody's putting a little magic into their hair. Tracks, weaves, you know, but wigs are like a bad word mm. to women because they signify old or, or bald or something yeah. like that. But I tell you, the easiest way to change your look and keep the hair that you have underneath healthy or as healthy as possible right. is to wear wigs. You're helping so many people. Well, uh, you know. You are, in uh, everything you do. I like to spread the word. Uh, you spread the word. Um, we are proud and happy to have you on public television. We thank wish you. you nothing but the best in your television career. And uh, 
Just keep doing it. And your new book's coming out again? May 7th. Ask Wendy. Ask Wendy. Well, we asked Wendy and we got the answers. I want to thank, thank you very you. much. For one on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Meridian Health, Wells Fargo, Qualcare Inc., NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Cone Resnick, NJ Best, Berkeley College, and by Verizon Communications. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.